It's Friday. You had a long week. Let me see if everything is working. Buttons over there working. The volume is up. Folks, I'm an old guy. Yeah? Have a little pity. Have a little mercy. You understand? Yannick, is that you? Yeah, that's Yannick. That's my friend. Craig, I see you. Yeah. All of you, come on in. Another week has passed. I'm still here. Although some wish death upon me, as they should, but I'm still here. Huh? Another Friday, another weekend, another day I can sip. Huh? Sip, yeah. Ocean spray. I try to eat healthy, but no, I cannot. I like salt. I like greasy food. One day I might die. But until then, I plan to enjoy life, yeah? As I should. Now I have two topics today. First, I was minding my own business, yeah? And this white guy, this white boy, and I'm an older guy, so I say white boy. He came up to me with a sign. This happened earlier today. He came with a sign. Maybe 50 centimeters by 30. Huh? He saw a black dude minding his own business and he came up to me with a fucking sign. It says on the sign in English, French, and Dutch. <laughs> Think about that. English, French, and Dutch. Saying, if I can donate something to him because he's hungry. Where's the applaud button? White boy and his pimp game. I looked straight in his eyes and said, you, you are a waste of white skin. Fuck out of here. What's wrong with you? This country, Europe in general, your forefathers, yeah, I give him peace of my mind before I run him away. Hey, yeah, you are a waste of, you're a fucking waste of white skin. Your parents, your foreparents, Went and robbed, steal and rape. So you can live a better life. Hmm? And you come now asking me for money. Huh? You should drop dead. If you're really hungry, you spend time to fill out this, this little placard that you have, this little sign. You should be filling out a job application. Fuck out of here. Hmm? We yourself white skin. Hmm? Your forefathers would be ashamed of you. Come and ask in a black man, a Jamaican at that. Hmm? I had to run him away. Get thee behind me, Satan. Huh? Everybody looking like, well, you don't have to be so offensive towards a guy. Of course. In my mind, I was taking it easy. Huh? You are a young guy. Go look some work. Come about. I was coming from work. Yeah? I heard. And you on the, you just standing there. The placard. And all the white folks just pass him. And for some reason, you reach out to me because blacks always have sympathy. Not me. You have that wrong. That's some African dude. Maybe if you ask them, they might give you the last. Hmm? Because they like to boot lick and butt lick. You white guys. I keep it real. Where's the applaud button? Yeah. I'm going to give you. Fill out an application form and go look at work. Hmm? As you should. But yeah, I run him. Let me see. Buttons okay. Audio still good. And I hope you hear me. Take another swig of my juice. Folks, I'm living my best life. This is therapy. When anything fucked up happened to me, I come and tell you guys. <sighs> this shit is good. I have a bottle of NSC, it's calling me. NSC ever call is the best thing in the world. It, 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 it's, when, when alcohol is calling you, it says a name just. My God. I think in heaven, I don't believe in heaven, but if there is a heaven and David is there playing his harp thing, if you read the Bible, you know, this archangel playing the harp, I think it's alcohol. The harp, the alcohol represents the harp on earth. This shit call like, like none other. Hmm? 
much at the time. I know that is you, not Craig. Craig is my main nigga on the trigger. I knew Craig from year one. And I did a video about him maybe a year ago. Yeah. There was there is never a day in my life I did know Craig. In high school, I'm here. Um, yeah, see with, see with me, folks. I'm all over the place. So like, like Birch it. It's Friday. This is how I do it on a Friday. In high school, Craig and I went to the same basic school, primary school, and high school. Although, in the latter part of our high school days, we had to go to another city, go to Mobile, but we still keep in contact. In high school, we meet Garnet and Knuckles. Now, Garnet, he used to terrorize me. Garnet was a young terrorist in his day. Yeah? Garnet was born big, if you know what I mean. I think Garnet went through puberty at the age of four, maybe five. Yeah? At five years old, Garnet was complete when it comes to puberty. At seven, Garnet was about two meters. I would visit Garnet and Garnet roping in some elephant, some big cow, at the age of six, yeah? Garnet could like put his hands over a basketball. Boom. The guy used to beat me. Hey, come, where's your lunch money to the pow? <laughs> and he's my friend till this day. When I do this video, I will send it to him. And he would just laugh. But karma is a bitch. Because now, when I call Garnet, I can tell when his white girlfriend, when Becky's beside Garnet, it's a different conversation we have. Becky's not there. Yo, Garnet. Garnet. Yo, Michael, what's up? You're still doing your bullshit, yes? Nigga, you need to grow up. That's how you talk to me. You need to grow up, you know? You're full of fuck, yeah. When his girlfriend, listen, when his girlfriend is beside him, Becky, and Becky is short, short white girl from America, when Becky's beside Garnet, he's like, hello? Um, this is Garnet. Um, uh, yeah. Michael, is this you? Well, I, you're calling me too late. It's 7.30 in the evening. My family is here. This nigga don't have a child with Becky. But yeah, my family is here. And I don't want them to think I am hanging out with you because you're a bum. <laughs> That's how Garnet talked to me. Becky is there. If he even answered the phone. Hmm? Becky giving Garnet uppercut, wheel kick, yeah? Conor McGregor kick. Punching my friend Garnet. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he. Garnet know I'm not lying. You see me? This white girl have him in check, as she should. He had me in check back in the days. Now white girl have him in check. This big Wakandan black guy. <laughs> Garnet could fight war for me. He was about nine. He could pass any grown man exam, and they send him on the front line. Out here. This brolic nigga. Yeah. Could play a superhero at the age of nine. That's how big Garnet was. Calling me, hey, come help me with this cow. This big bull. Charging Garnet. Just mm, bull. <laughs> Fuck, I was big now. Fuck. I was scared as hell of Garnet. He terrorized me. I still have nightmare now. In the night, I wake up, look around. Garnet is still there. So, fuck. <laughs> But yo, yo, fuck this white boy. <laughs> I have no money to give to him. We have white skin. Next topic. Yeah, folks, I write things here. You know. I take notes. I keep forgetting, but yeah. When I take notes, yeah, I can ramble for two, three hours. I have a garbage thing over there. Oh, I miss. I miss terribly. Here, boys. Second topic. Again, I was on the internet. On Facebook. This time I saw this. And salute to this young man, this pastor. He was arrested for selling um, tickets to heaven for 500 US. Riddle me this. Tell me which country that happened. Three, two, one. You, you, you guessed it, right? Africa. This happened in Africa. And because I am who I am, I see the irony, I see the, the, the fun in everything. Salute to this young man. I wish I had thought of it first. 
And if I had known in hindsight that I could ask for 500 US for a ticket to go to heaven and his congregation would pay it, I would be the first one to do that. I would beat him to the punch. Me, I am admitted live and here. I'm admitting this shit. When the police arrest this guy, why? Look down there. Why? Why arrest this guy? If you need somebody to arrest, arrest the congregation because they bought the ticket. I don't know if there was an expiration date on the ticket saying, listen, Jesus coming back this and this time and you're going to heaven with me or him or whomever. But the congregation is at fault. Everybody will buy even one ticket. From the, and I heard, I read that people buy it for the entire family. Grandma, here's a ticket. Great grandma, here's a ticket. Uncle Tom, here's a ticket. And for your two kids here, ticket everywhere. You understand? Because the pastor say, yo, he's selling it and Jesus talked to him. How dumb can you be? Huh? It's some bullshit. And Craig, this is some bullshit. But I cannot blame the guy. A hustle is a hustle is a hustle. Preflow dollar in America. Preflow dollar flying in a private jet. Turn around and say, listen, Jesus told him he should park that jet because it's old and he need a newer model. He said this in 2017 and he got it. But the new jet cost 60 million and he asked his congregation, some of the congregation taking bus to church and they donated money for this asshole to buy a $60 million jet. Kenneth Copeland, he has about, about four airplanes here, plus helicopter. He has a own private airport behind his house. And people still donate to him. As a matter of fact, I'm selling prior. I should put my cash up on the, uh, on the screen. I am selling prior. 100 euros, 100 euro, not, I'm not in the US. 100 euro, I will pray for you. You're laughing, yeah? Because so you know I'm full of shit. But if I come to you and say I'm an RDN minister, you believe that fuck? I should get RDN because it, it's a lucrative business. You don't pay tax. And you get all the money in the world. Tell me. Jesus Christ, I should start believing in Jesus and stop doing this bullshit. Stop going to work in the heat, in the snow, in the rain and just put on a cloak and say, yo, I am part of this ministry now. Give me money. Hell, it is what it is. Hmm. So yeah, maybe I come back on here tonight. Maybe I go live. Yeah. I'm too lazy for that. Soon as I hang up now, <laughs> I start sleep. Yeah, I have to rest my bones. Yeah, big up yourself, Craig. <laughs> I have to talk to Garnet. Tell him I was only joking, isn't it? That guy's still big. I might, I might run into him in Jamaica. And I have to really run out here. <laughs> it is what it is. Big up yourself. Like, share, and subscribe. Until next time. Boom. My